coming from 1 Samuel, the first chapter. I'm going to read verses 9 through 20. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but would give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put away, put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Akina knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. Today, we are going to talk for just a few minutes about the proper petition. Look at your neighbor on your way down and say, if you're going to come to God, you need to come correct. If you're going to come to him, we got to come correct. Amen. So we're going to talk about the proper position. You all know that um, those who have been with us this summer and um, even those who may have been watching online or visiting, you know that we, our pastor, has been in a series on how we grow, where he is looking at the spiritual disciplines and making sure that we are equipped as the people of God to walk in the way of God. And so as we come to a close with this summer series, I want to bring our attention to the spiritual discipline of prayer. Prayer has always and will always be a priority here at Word Tabernacle Church. As a matter of fact, I want you to mark your calendars for Tuesday, September 12th, because as we come off of the summer shift, we are going to return to a concert of prayer. We're not going to return to the traditional teaching of Bible study. Pastor is going to get back into his wisdom series. But on September 12th, we're going to come together in the sanctuary and online, and we're going to gather for a concert of prayer. So this morning, we are, going, we are looking at an account of an answer prayer. The Bible says that Hannah went to the temple and she prayed before God. In verse 20, it lets us know that God answered her prayer. Hannah prayed and God performed. She asked and he answered. Hannah cried out to the Lord and he carried her through. And I I ain't the smartest one in the crowd, but I do know that if I have a prayer and I need an answer, then I need to look at those who have received an answer prayer from the Lord and take a look at the account of what happened. This account 
is worth paying attention to because I'm sure I'm not the only one in the sanctuary or online that has a petition before the Lord. I'm sure I'm not the only one who need God to show up like only he can. I'm sure I'm not the only one that came into the sanctuary and said, God, if you don't do it, I don't know how it's going to get done. I'm sure I'm not the only one and Hannah isn't either where you cried yourself to sleep after you have come, after you have presented something to the Lord that you needed him to do. This is an account and never and whenever I want to encourage or equip myself when it comes to prayer, I go to the Bible. Family, we need to know that the Bible is more than just a storybook. Um, it is historical account, but it's more than just history. Um, um, I love Psalm and but it's Psalm and Songs of Solomon, but the Bible is more than literature. It is an account of how the Creator responds to the creation. Come on, it is an account of how God looks at the thing in Genesis that He said was good and how he responds to us and so we are at a time in the Bible where Hannah has petitioned the Lord in verse 17 it says then Eli answered and said go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition that word petition means to make a request that it says that Hannah came in the tabernacle and she had a request of the Lord those who know about Hannah if I would have read um, I started at verse 1 you would have seen that Hannah is barren not only is she barren but she has also been bullied by the one that's in her house that can have children and she can't. Come on, I, am I the only one you tired of people looking at you and they defining you by what you don't have and they ain't seeing what God is doing? They so busy reminding you of what didn't happen and sometimes we can get tripped up ourselves and we go before the Lord and we focus more on what we don't have and we forget about all the things that God is doing in our life. The Bible says that Hannah was bullied by Penina and it drove her to the temple and she was and she was in despair and she was crying out to the Lord. She had a petition. She had a request of God. She had a, I need you to do this now. And I'm sure that I, she is not the only one that has a Lord. I don't know how much longer I can keep going. I don't, I want to say I'm a faithful servant, but I don't know if I'm sitting with the same thing tomorrow morning. If I'm going to be able to lift my hands and worship, I need you to do it now. Come on. Anybody got a now request before the Lord? I need you to heal my son now. My marriage need to be repaired now. Lord, heal my body now. Come on, somebody say now. now. And so Hannah went to the temple. Let us investigate her request. I know it may seem obvious that her petition was for a son, but Tristan, when I was studying, the Lord said, Hannah petitioned me more for than just a son. So let us investigate her request, but because I know her petition wasn't just about the son, because that wasn't the request. She didn't have a son, she was barren. A barrenness is a problem, not a petition. And so let's look at and investigate what the, the, the priest Eli said, your repetition will be granted unto you. The first thing that Hannah petitioned to the Lord, the first thing, Nikita, that she requested of the Lord, the first thing that she made a request about and she put before him was his power. What she was saying is, Lord, I desire to see your power. I 
I know it was because in verse 10, um, the, the verse says, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Verse 11 says, she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. Before she made uh, uh, any request about her son, she acknowledged God as the Lord of hosts. This got me excited because the Lord of hosts is Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth means God Almighty. God Almighty means God of the angel of the armies. What she was saying is, Lord, I know I want a son, but let me first acknowledge your power. Um, that is why the Hebrew boys could stand before Nebuchadnezzar and say um, if you throw us in the fire our God can get us out but if he don't we still gonna worship him because they knew him as the God of power and when we prioritize his power over our problems then we'll see God move like never before. The next time you are driven to prayer don't you prayer out with your problem you acknowledge that he is the king of kings you acknowledge that he is the lord of lords you acknowledge that you come into the one that can do all things but fail come on throw your head back and say power power her petition was his power her request was let me see your power she could have acknowledged him by any name. You're the provider, you're the, you're the banner, but she said, Sahoba, you are the God of the angels. You are the one that can direct an angel to my situation and move on my behalf. And so she petitioned him first for his power. I told you, if you're going to come to the sovereign God, we need to come correct. Come on, don't you dare enter into his holy presence and you're more consumed with your problem than you are his presence. Come on, we need to quit telling God about our problems and we need to look in the mirror and tell our problems about our God. Come on, sickness, I know you think you got me, but I serve the one who was a healer. I know you devil, you think you got my son, but I serve the one who was a deliverer. I know you think you got my marriage, but I got the one, I serve the one who can resurrect dead things. Lord, show me your power. That is why in a moment you're going to have an opportunity, those of, of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you're going to have an opportunity to, to accept him because the greatest display of God's power is when he snatched us out of the hand of the enemy, when he gave us life when we deserve death. The greatest display of his power when he turned our address from hell to heaven, the greatest display of our power of his power is when he looked beyond us and so we needed his son and sent his only son and so in a moment you're going to be able to accept the one who is almighty who has all power in his hands because salvation is the greatest display of power and so when Hannah came to the temple she came correct. I love that because we can get so consumed with us and we miss what God is doing. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but when Hannah birthed Samuel, she not only birthed something for her house, she birthed something for the nation. God is grooming you for the nations and you are so consumed what's going on in your address. Come on. God wanted to do something beyond Nashville. God wanted to do something beyond Rocky Mount. He wanted to do something beyond your address. He is preparing you for the nations and you coming and talking about your bread and your water. He wants to do something for the nations through you. And so... She had to come correct. 
and her first petition, her request was about his power. Not only did she petition him about his power, the second thing that she presented God was with his past performances. I don't want you to think that this is the first time that God has received a prayer from his child that needs him. <laughs> and I don't want you to think you are the first one that has a problem that only God can solve. And so what Hannah did was she presented him and she the petition was his past performances. Let's look at verse 11. It says, then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me. There are several accounts in the Bible where it says God remembered. In Genesis 8, 1, he remembered Noah when he brought the flood to the land. He remembered Noah and his family, Edomax. In Genesis 19, he remembered Abraham, Lisa, when he was destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. He remembered Abraham and his family. But, but this is not, those are not the accounts that Hannah was referring to. There's one more account in the Old Testament where it says that God God remembered and it resulted in him moving mightily. In Genesis 30 and 22, it said, then God remembered Rachel and gave her a son. She, he, God remembered Rachel and opened up her womb. <laughs> and so this is what Hannah was saying. Lord, you've done it before. And I know you don't love Rachel more than you love me, God. Your word says you're not a respect a person. If you can do it for Rachel, then I know you can do it for me. So remember your maidservant. I need you to open up my womb. This is why it's important that we know the word of God and that we are in tune to the works of God. Pastor Gellier is always telling us, don't miss God. You need to see where God is moving and then you join him what he's doing because God is always moving. Come on. That's why we got to know that God is, hasn't just started working miracles with you he has been working miracles come on Jackie Miss Jackie is saying that he's an old time God he parted the Red Sea in Exodus he fed 5,000 in Matthew come on he made the blind man see in John 9 he raised Lazarus from the dead in John 11 and see you got to be in his word to know what he has done but even if you ain't read his word even if you're not a Sunday school student like me and you heard about the three Hebrew boys or Daniel in the lion's singing, you just need to look around and see how God's moving. Lord, I don't know about Daniel, but I know you delivered Jojo from jail. So can you deliver my son from jail? I don't know much about Hannah, but when I looked over my neighbor, her, um, she said that she couldn't have no child and you touched her womb and so can you touch mine? Father, I don't know about Lazarus, but I do know about Leroy. Leroy was in the hospital and his family prayed for him and you touched him and now he's walking up and down the street. Come on, anybody got an account for what the Lord has done? He ain't just starting now. He is always moving. He always moving. Always moving. And so, 
I'm going to give three invitations. The first one I told you, you're going to get a chance to get saved. And the second one I'm going to give is a chance to join Word Tabernacle Church. It's just not about Word. Word Tabernacle It's about the kingdom. But here at Word, we do believe that when you work the Word, the Word going to work in your life. And so you need to be hooked up with some believers that when we go to Starbucks and we drink coffee, we talking about coffee, but we also talking about the goodness of God. You need to hook up with some believers that when you in the hospital, when you in the doctor's office and you see your word eye and y'all lock eye and eye Dolores, what we saying is baby don't worry. We serve a healing God and so you ain't got nothing to worry about. That is why you need to be a part of a church. I hope each city it's, it, it's lighting up the chat with testimonies of what God has done. Because you can't see how God is moving if you by yourself and you consume with you. Mike, you can't see how God is moving when all you see is the problem in front of you. But even when I'm consumed with myself and I see Minister Betty at church walking in church, maybe a little slower than she used to, but I'm reminded that God healed her when she had a stroke. So even if I'm sick in my body, as I watch her walk down the aisle of the sanctuary, I am reminded that God is a healer and that he touches his children. And so Hannah presented, he, she presented his past performances. You touch Leah's womb. And when she asked you to remember her, the Bible said you remember her and touch her womb. That is why I love to sit at the feet of, we call, it, we call them first generation here, but our wise warriors, our older saints, I love to sit at their feet. Tell me, Miss Edna, about how you took two you took two pieces of bread and made a whole Thanksgiving dinner. How in the world did you do that? I know Jesus took two fish and five loaves, but you made a whole Thanksgiving dinner. How? Because I, I, I struggle with taking two pieces of bread and making a sandwich, so you got to help a sister out. <laughs> you got to help a sister out. Those who came through segregation and Jim Crow, you still standing here? You ain't in jail? You ain't hit nobody with a folding chair? Come on, you still here? You got to help a sister out because I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> How in the world? How in the world? Did you make it over? How in the world are you still holding on? How in the world are having you lost your mind? How in the world? And they all have but God testimonies. <laughs> Anybody with a but God testimony? And so Hannah just didn't petition God for a son. She presented him with his power. And then she presented him with his past performances. And this is my last point before I give an invitation. She presented God with her position. So she acknowledged him first. She, Yasmin, she acknowledged him first, but then she brought herself into the equation. We get it backwards. We bring us into it. And we say, God, do what we need you to do. 
So she came correct, Daquan. She came correct. She said, Lord, you are powerful. This is not your first rodeo. You've done it before. And now here I am. Verse 11 said, then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but would give your maidservant a male child. And that one verse, she said the word maidservant three times. What was she communicating to God? She was communicating her commitment to serving him. A maidservant is one who does the will of God. It's the same term that Mary used in Luke 138 when the angel approached her and said, you're pregnant with the savior of the world. Mary scratched her head and said, I, I don't know. I've never seen a man. But Mary said that let it be unto your maidservant as the, as the Lord wills. Because although we see Hannah Praying to God about a problem she has? Hannah just didn't start praying. Come on. She didn't just start praying with that problem, Miss Joanne. Hannah was reminding God that she had been committed to the, his work this whole time. And see, we want to show up with a problem. And we want God to move earth and heaven to solve it, and we ain't put no skin in the game. Now, now let me let me let me correct. I don't want y'all to go and say, Pastor Stephanie said I can present my receipts to the Lord and He need to move on my behalf. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that God is God and He can do whatever He wants to do, and He can choose to move however He wants to choose. But I am saying that is something about a faithful servant that desires the heart of God more than the hand of God that causes the hand of God to move on the faithful servant. She made a vow, Trishonda. Hannah is the only woman in the Old Testament recorded that made and kept a vow. That's important. She made a vow, but she kept it. <laughs> How many of us saying, Lord, if you get me out of this one, then I'm going to be on the front row in Bible study. And then two Tuesdays go by and we can't find you. You had to work overtime. Anybody like me that said, Lord, if you move this time, you ain't got to worry about me no more. And then two weeks later, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer about the same thing I came two weeks ago. Hannah, she made it and she kept it. She made a Nazarite vow. That's important. She didn't make just any vow. I told you, Hannah just didn't start praying. Hannah been praying. She been with the Lord. A Nazarite vow, I, won't, I don't have time to dig into it, but when you go in your own study time, write down Numbers chapter 6. And you study the Nazarite vow when the Lord was speaking to Moses and he was telling Moses to tell the people about this special vow that he needed them to make. And he said that, you know, they shouldn't drink no wine or strong drink. They shouldn't put, they shouldn't cut their hair. It, it, it's a vow of separation and it is a vow of consecration. It's a vow of commitment to the Lord. Come on. Hannah was saying, Lord, I've been committed to you and I will stay committed to you when you give me a son. And I will do that by making a vow that he will will take the Nazarite special vow. What Hannah was saying, Lord, you won't have to worry about your girl. When you bless me, I'm going to still be in the temple. You don't have to worry about me. When you bless me, because we are praying for booze and babes, and then we stay cuddled up with them on Sunday mornings, and we don't come in the sanctuary, but we want to say, God bless us. We're praying for extra 
your money, but we don't pay our tithes, but we want to say, God bless us. We praying for healing of our bodies, but we ain't got no plans to serve in his temple, but we want God to bless us. What Hannah was saying is you won't have to worry about me. I've been rolling with you for at least 10 years and I'm going to keep rolling. I know you said, how you, how you think 10 years? Will you? The Bible don't say nothing about 10 years, but the Bible does say in verse 3 that Hannah and her family, her husband, Echina, they came to the temple year after year to sacrifice and worship. I know you're saying, what, what, I, I still don't see 10 years. You said at least 10 years. Well, Elk Akana, Hannah's husband, could not figure out why Hannah was so grieved because the Bible says she didn't eat nothing. She, she couldn't eat. She didn't have no appetite. And he was like, am I not better than, to you than 10 sons? <laughs> So th this is what this looked like. Penina, her enemy that's in the house, because see, Penina was um, Akana's wife as well. And in, those, in the biblical times, if your wife could not bear your son, you were allowed to marry again. So Hannah was the first wife, and he got a second wife to come, and it says that she had 10 sons. We don't know how many daughters, so it could have been 20 years, but she had at least 10 sons. Come on. It takes nine months to have a baby. And then when they had a baby, you would, if you read on down, you would see Hannah didn't go to the temple the following year because she had Samuel, so she stayed with him. So 10 sons, she been looking at this problem in the face for 10 at least years, but baby girl been still going to worship. She been still making the track with her family. She still going to the, set, the temple and sacrifice. And some of us been dealing with stuff for 10 minutes and we about to give up on God? The devil is alive. You better keep worshiping. You better keep sacrificing. You better keep praying because the Lord is going to see about you. Tell your neighbor, keep going. The Lord going to see about you. Keep going. Don't give up. Keep going. And listen, I am not disregarding what you're going through because 10 seconds in the fire is a long time, Belinda. I'm not disregarding what nobody is going through. But I am saying, as, as Miss Jackie's saying, God is an on time God. He is Sahelbo God, Sabaoth God. Remember I said at the beginning. That means he could send angels to you at any time because he's over the angels. He, he, he leads the, the army of angels. That means he can speak to a situation and it has to come under subjection because he is sovereign, God Almighty. What I need for us to do is get out of God's way and when he is ready to move, we can find ourselves favorable for him to move on our behalf. I don't want no sin. I don't want no body. I don't want no problem in the way keeping me from coming to the sanctuary and worshiping my God because when you move God I want to be found in your presence it's something about him moving on behalf of those he finds in his presence he look he can do it at the bingo hall he not scared of nobody in the bingo hall. He can snatch you up that bingo hall. But it's something about being in his presence. You keep praying. He can go to the crack house and knock down doors and drag your son out because he's almighty. You find yourself in his presence. So Hannah presented her position. It was a position 
of commitment. And I told you, it wasn't like she was saying, I'm your maid servant, do this for me, because a maid servant is a position of humility. Tamika, a maid servant means I'm owned by somebody else. And if you are praying to God and you want him to move on your behalf, you got to first acknowledge that you are not your own. So Lord, however you want to move, I'm asking for a healing, but however you want to move, if you want me to start a hospital lobby ministry, Lord, I go to the hospital every time I have an appointment and tell people about you. However you want to move. It got quiet in here because we don't want, we don't want that. We want the terms and present them to God of how he needs to move. We want to tell him when, where, and how. But he is sovereign. And so, she, was, she wasn't prideful. I told you, she came acknowledging God first. That's why that's very important. She was humble. But a servant is also one who, who loses their life on behalf of someone else to serve them. And she was saying, I've been doing this for a while. I have one, one petition that was preceded by all of these petitions. Could you touch my womb? I'm going to open the doors of the church and I want to pray for us because Hannah had a position of being poured out. The Bible says in verse 15, she was saying to Eli, she said, I'm not drunk. Like this is how much of herself she had lost. She didn't even look like herself. I'm going to say it again. She didn't look like herself. He thought she was a drunk, crazy woman. Now, Hannah had been coming to the temple every year, so she knew Eli. Eli said, are you drunk? What in the world is going on with you? Because she lost herself and got caught up in God. I want you to lose, I want us to lose ourselves so much to the point people don't recognize us. And then when they think you're drunk, you know, hit them with what grandma say, I'm drunk on the spirit. <laughs> when they think you acted different because you got a boo, Jesus is my boo. Let them know, like, it is okay when people talk about us, when we go all in for God. You can't protect your reputation in God's too anyway. And we need some things for him. So she wasn't holding back. She was pouring herself out to the one who already knew. I'm going to open the doors of the church. But I want us to, to look at Hannah's petition and God's performance. Verse 17 said that she got a blessing from the priest. Eli said, go in favor Thank God we live in the post-resurrection time and we don't need a priest to give us favor because Jesus is the priest. So imagine Jesus in Romans 8, it says he intercedes for us when we don't have the words to say, when we at the altar like Hannah with our, our mouth. Y'all remember when, when if mom used to back slap you and she, she knocked the wind? Like you can't say nothing. That's how Hannah was. And Eli said, go in favor. So imagine we can't say nothing, but God, Jesus is interceding for us according to Romans 8. And then he says, go in favor. She got a blessing from the priest. Not only that, Shoshana, she got her bounce back. If you look at verses 1 through, through 7, it says she wept bitterly and her husband was trying to feed her and she couldn't even eat. But verse um, um, 18 and 19, the Bible says she went from sad to glad and then she went back to the table and sis ate. 
That means she got, she, that depression spirit, she was asking for a son, but she got delivered from depression. And not only did she eat, this is the grown folks in the room, she laid with her husband. Come on, boo, I know I ain't wanting to look at you before because I couldn't have your son, but I'm ready now. The Bible says that Elkanah laid with his wife. She got her bounce back. Come on, God wants to do more than just what you asking for. He wants to give you your bounce back. He, he wants you to step in the, he wants you to step in the room with your shoulders back and your head high. He wants to do more than just what. But listen, she got her bounce back before she got her son. She got her bounce back before she got her son. That's important. Because we are waiting for our come out walk. We wait in the stroll, the aisles, when we healed. But what are you going to do before it comes? And then, verse 20 tells us she got the son she was asking for, Brother David. But beyond that... Hannah birthed Samuel. Samuel was one of the greatest leaders of the nation of Israel. He led Israel for many years um, as a prophet, a priest, and a judge. He interceded for them. He was the first, he was the one to, affirm, to appoint the first king. When they said, give us a king, give us a military king. Sam was like, I don't, y'all don't know what y'all asking for? Give us a king. He anointed Saul. And then when the children of Israel saw that what they wanted wasn't what God had for them and Saul started tripping a little bit, he, didn't, he just said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to anoint David. And he anointed David. Because of Hannah's correct petition. Not only did she get blessed, but the, cho- the children of Israel got blessed. I want you to understand family as, amen, that's a good place to clap. I want you to understand it's beyond you. Whenever we're servants of the Lord, it's more than about us. I know you're tired of people talking about you. I know it takes a lot to go to the doctor time after time. I know you are tired of people putting your mouth, their mouth on your relationship. I know that you're tired of seeing people go on trips and you can't go. But the place that God has you is more than about you. He going to heal nations through you. Oh, I got excited about that. He going to send you places that you didn't even sign up to go on his behalf because you came to him correctly. 